Do you ever think about suffixes? Do you ever think, sure, I know what disgruntled means and I know what ruthless means, but what is a gruntle and what is a ruth? No? Well, I'm going to tell you anyway, so um, I don't know, either sit back or click off or do whatever, whatever it is that you... <sighs> Unpaired words are words where there appears to be an antonym somewhere in its past, but for whatever reason, that particular antonym has fallen out of favour. My examples from earlier on in the video being good examples. So ruthless. Ruth is clearly a word, or it was once, but it, and it probably still is, but it appears to have fallen out of favour with the speaking masses. Ruthless is a word that means without compassion or without something else that hang on meaning without pity or compassion you might say something like tim waterstone when setting up waterstones across the country in various place places was completely ruthless by setting them up next door to small independent bookshops and driving them out of business ooh controversial statement there the original meaning of the word Ruth goes back to its, well, it has roots in Norse and means regretful or sorrowful. Just so that you know, the name Ruth has a different root, so it's a homophone, i.e. it's a word which has the same sound but uh, has a different meaning. So the name Ruth has its roots in Hebrew and means companion or friend or fellow woman, which is nice, isn't it? Let's all have a cup of tea. Another example of an unpaired word is disgruntled. Disgruntled means to be disappointed or unsatisfied. Reading Dickens or eating a subway or watching a Michael Bay film tends to lead me into a disgruntled state. And no, I didn't just compare Dickens to Michael Bay. Coincidentally though, I did say that they both leave me feeling disgruntled. So here's the thing about disgruntled, it's actually quite misleading. You might imagine that because there's a dis at the beginning of disgruntled, that actually disgruntled or gruntled actually means to be satisfied or happy, i.e. not reading Dickens or watching a Michael Bay film or eating Subway. Well, you'd be wrong and I was wrong and we were all wrong. Some of you were probably right. You see, dis isn't always a prefix meaning the opposite of. Sometimes it's what's known as an intensifier. So a gruntle is to grumble. It is to make a grunt. In fact, it's actually a frequentative, which is a word which is quite hard to say, of to grunt. So to gruntle is to have many grunts or to do many grunts is probably the better way to put it. I so to be disgruntled, because that dis is an intensifier and not an antonym signifier, that's probably, that's I think probably how you would put it. To be disgruntled is to express many, 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 many grunts. Isn't English helpful? Isn't it like a little happy helperton on some mushrooms or some other hallucinogen, which means it's staring at the sky, drooling? Which is what you might imagine someone who is feckless might do. First of all, I need to get out of the way that feckless has nothing to do with the Irish half-fat swear word feck, which in itself is actually a minced oath, which means that it's a modification which to make things a bit more sort of polite for polite society of the other word, which I don't really need to say because you almost certainly know it. And if you don't, then say it out loud. Look it up and s find out what feck is a modification for. Say it out loud to your gran tomorrow. She'll really enjoy it. I, I Honestly, she'll really enjoy it. She likes that kind of thing. Your gran does. She likes, she likes that. So feck in the context of feckless is actually a, it's an old Scots word and it's a modification of a Middle English word which leads us to effect. So feck means to have effect, it means to be good at something, to have value. Nobody really says that anymore though, so we're left with feckless, which is someone who has no effect or value i.e. Piers Morgan, who actually sadly does have an effect on our culture, but is also completely valueless. So anyway, what are your favourite unpaired words? Do you have any that you can think of? If you can, then maybe stick them down in the comments. If you'd like to know where I've got all of this knowledge and put it in my brain through my 
eye holes and my ear holes, then you can find that out in the description below where I've listed all of my sources. If you're watching this on YouTube, then head over to my Instagram or Facebook page. One day I might do something interesting. And if you're watching this on Instagram, then maybe head over to my YouTube page and give it a subscribe or a like or whatever it is that you're meant to do. Press that bell. I, do you know what? I don't care. I've got 90 subscribers. Who gives a fuck? Take care of yourselves and I'll see you or you'll, you'll see me. I probably won't see you. I mean, unless you're my mum who mostly watches these videos, I'll probably see you soon or next week. Thank you.